So part two, uh, Welcome to the Real World, is about uh, Jean Baudrillard's Simulacre and Simulation, which was um, first published in English in 1981. I'm not going to go over Baudrillard, that's just going to tell you that he has been a very influential uh, French philosopher of the 20th century, especially of the 70s and 80s and 90s. And um, the concept that he introduces here, that he really defines, is the one of simulation, right? For Baudrillard, simulation has no reference. It is the generation by models of a real without origin or reality, a hyper-real. So reality here is a copy, in a certain sense, of a model. It is generated by a model, right? And this model is basically a digital model of simulation. So the real, in a certain sense, is computer generated. And that means that it can be reproduced an indefinite number of times from the model without loss of quality. And that also means that the hyperreality of simulation threatens the difference between real and imaginary. We have seen how Descartes was trying to draw a line between reality and imagination, right? What is real and the for true, and what is just merely perceived and imagined. So, uh, hyperreal <clears throat> threatens this difference between the real and imaginary, the true and the false fiction and reality. Um, so in what way is representation different from simulation? Uh, representation, uh, says Baudrillard, is referential, right? It is based on the notion that science can either imitate, mask, or produce or reproduce a profound reality. Uh, that's why the iconoclast right, um, the, um, uh, wanted to destroy the images of God because they felt that art, by imitating um, divine images, by producing images of the divine, was in a certain sense posing a challenge right, to the hand of God. Uh, simulation, by contrast, is not concerned with a more or less accurate reproduction of the real, but is self-referential and therefore is not concerned with the difference between the sign and the real. It stems from the radical negation, says Baudrillard, of the sign as value, of the sign as having a value of its own. Uh, so dear, here is on page 172 in the text that you were supposed to read uh, for today. Uh, we see uh, that Baudrillard defines Disneyland as a simulacrum, and Disneyland is presented as imaginary in order to make us believe that the rest is real, when in fact all of LA and the America surrounding it are no longer real, but of the order of the hyper-real and of simulation. It is no longer a question of a false representation of reality ideology, but of concealing the fact that the real is no longer real, and thus of saving the reality principle. The Disneyland imaginary is neither true nor false. It is a deterrence machine set up in order to rejuvenate in reverse the fiction of the real. So this is one example of how uh, Baudrillard defines the simulacrum, but that's not the only one. Uh, he, uh, for instance, describes surveys and polls as a uh, simulacra and uh, simulations. Why? Because the poll um, is always asking questions to which there is a predetermined answer or set of answers. Therefore, a poll is always a model that is not so much trying uh, to capture reality, but projecting itself onto reality is shaping reality. For example, the social world after the questions is asking. Um, the Twin Towers are, for Baudrillard, an example of a simulacrum. He wrote about the Twin Towers long before they were uh, destroyed with the um, September 11 attacks in uh, 2001. 
Um, he wrote about them actually when they were built around um, 1973, I believe. And um, he says that this is a new model of um, skyscraper, a new architectural model in which uh, the, um, the skyscraper is uh, no longer just this, sim this phallic symbol expression of human power and civilization that connects the land, the ground to the sky, but these two uh, identical uh, skyscrapers are actually a copy of each other so that it's no longer possible to establish which one is the original and which one is the copy. And likewise, computer code, of course, uh, is the very basis of uh, simulation, is, uh, as we know, long strings of zeros and ones out of uh, was, uh, combinations and recombinations. Everything can be uh, produced and reproduced. Um, in a different part of Simulacra and Simulation, he goes through a history of the development of Simulacra. He talks about the three orders of Simulacra, the Renaissance, counterfeit, the industrial production, industrial commodity, and then the simulation as the most sophisticated, the digital simulation as the most sophisticated example of um, Simulacra and the most recent one. Uh, so my questions in relation uh, to media and identity. Uh, simulation does not seem to be particularly concerned with the uh, human, with human expression, for example, or with human feelings. Uh, it does seem to be rather concerned uh, with itself, right? The hyperreal, as we have seen, as a logic of its own. If that is true, then have we entered, as some philosophers claim, a post-human Era. How can we learn something about ourselves, for example, right, uh, from the media and through the media if the media do not care about us, seem to be utterly indifferent to us? And is there a way out from this desert of the real, right? In the Matrix, uh, there is this expression, welcome to the very powerful scene, welcome to the desert of the real. It's pretty obvious to me. The, the directors of the Matrix have read their Potter Yard. So is there a way out from this hyperspace without atmosphere described by Potter Yard? Okay, that's all. Looking forward to your questions and the discussion on the blog.